Hello. I've always been impressed with how characters in Marvel movies show so much emotion, but have you ever wondered how they do that when they have to face the limitations of being behind a mask for the majority of the film? A good example of this is Deadpool. He has his eyes and mask moved by VFX to help show subtle expressions, emotion, and comedic movement. It's very important because more than any other character, Deadpool creates serious and impactful emotional bonds with the audience. Oh, I'm touching myself tonight. I looked further into the effects used by Marvel to achieve this, as they seem simple on the surface. However, when I started researching, it became clear that the techniques were actually quite complex, with a load of research and technology behind them. So it gives us a few questions to answer. How do they overcome the limitations of showing emotion with these characters? What sort of technology are they using to achieve it? And how does it differ between the different characters we see on the screen? We'll answer all of that throughout the video, as we will learn how emotion is brought to the screen through facial expressions and physical movement for a few different characters. And of course, we'll discuss why this is so important for us as the audience. With Deadpool and Wolverine being the most recent movie, let's start there. To understand how this was done for both Deadpool and Wolverine, we need to go back to the first Deadpool for some context on the effect. Since the start, Deadpool has always been a character that has been known for his expressive personality and a lot of moments directly facing the camera for fourth wall breaks. Because of this, the movement of his face to match his dialogue and his resting facial expression are both essential elements to get correct. While Ryan Reynolds meets the expressive needs of the character perfectly, there was one hurdle that would make things very complex to portray this. In pre-production, the original plan was for the mask to be thin enough to move as Ryan spoke. However, as things progressed, it became a rigid mask that would not show any expression. To overcome this, they had to pivot to a VFX solution that had over 60 artists working on it. The effect started with doing a camera track of Deadpool's head and then warping it with a blend shape expression rig. This means they could create different facial shapes and expressions like eyebrows being raised and the jaw being moved with an array of different sliders. To gather reference data to work from, they had Ryan re-record his lines without a mask on in front of the camera. They would then match the recordings to the digital model of Deadpool to ensure it accurately matched the timing, the speed, and Ryan's performance itself. Once the animations were completed, they did a lighting pass on the surface of the mask. While the lighting itself would help make the effect more believable, mapping it to the surface of the mask was the key element. This helped the lighting adjust naturally as different parts of the face moved. Now that we have an understanding of the original effect, let's get into Deadpool and Wolverine. The focus in this movie was to still enhance the motion of the mask to ensure it effectively captured Ryan's emotions, dialogue, and comedic timing. They also wanted to stay true to the comic book vibe for Ryan and Hugh without feeling too cartoony. To effectively achieve this, they applied what they've learned over time. That less is more. Pixels can only be pushed so far before things start to look unnatural, so they start to be more intentional about the fine details while toning things down at the same time. The main technique that helped them achieve this was using a machine learning tool that analyzed the dialogue for patterns in the waveform and volume. This gave animators another great reference as it showed how much the mask should move and help guide them on navigating those subtle nuances. With the addition of Wolverine, the same less is more techniques were used. It was very important to keep Wolverine as accurate to the comics as possible since it was his first time wearing the mask on screen. While there were some conversations on if they should even touch the mask digitally, they decided the middle ground to be preserving the metal wings on the side and only moving the fabric and leather around the eyes. While it may seem like a lot of work for such minor details, audiences connect with Deadpool because of his sarcasm, over-the-top humor, and his out-of-pocket comments. Because of that, we need full-face expression for viewers to get the right level of immersion. Plus, it just makes his engagement and charm that much more effective. What's your name? Captain Delicious Pants. Who's Captain Delicious Pants? <laughs> so wholesome. Speaking of wholesome, there's another wholesome character we are going to dive into that also shows a lot of emotion through their facial expressions. But instead of the expressions being enhanced by visual effects, they are almost entirely crafted through them. We've seen a lot of the Hulk over the years, but Avengers Endgame introduced Smart Hulk, a perfect combination between Bruce Banner and the Hulk. Because of these two characters being combined, they needed to put some thought and strategy into how they would implement Mark Ruffalo's performance into the character. Before getting into the motion capture and performance side of things, they had to start with look dev to find the size and shape of the character. In this process, they worked to find the perfect balance between Mark and the Hulk before creating the final 3D version. While this was all important to the effect, the work really started when they got further into the process with Mark. As you can imagine, the techniques to bring this to life are incredibly in-depth, but here's a broken down version of it. It all started with a very detailed 3D scan of Mark's face. This captured data about the texture of his skin, the positioning of his facial features, and even his skull and jaw. They did this 20 times with different expressions to gather the information about his face to create an accurate digital puppet down to the pores in his skin. This scan created a model that was more than just his face, as it also understood bone structure and tissue. Once complete, 
The face was divided into thousands of tiny segments that understand how the skin is stretched, wrinkled, and moved in relation to the bone underneath. When the scan was completed, the production was able to move Mark on set. It was really important for Mark to be on set for the film with the cast, as they wanted him and the other actors to be able to work off of each other in the moment. They also wanted his facial performance to match the nuances of his physical movement, so this technique allowed for a really natural performance. After all of the performance data was captured on set, they moved into post-production to apply that data to the digital model we discussed earlier. The software analyzed the footage of Mark's performance and transferred that to the model. Since there is quite a size difference between Mark and the Hulk, this helped apply the data accurately it also accounted for subtle nuances like lip movement and how the skin moved and wrinkled next to his eyes and mouth. While the technique is different from the one used on Deadpool, the purpose is still to bring the emotion from the actor to the character itself in an accurate manner. But in this case, it helps preserve the physical performance of the actor as well. Going the distance for the details here is what really allows Mark's performance to not be lost through a CG character and allows us to empathize and understand Hulk in a way we haven't been able to before. Our last character to explore is quite interesting, as there are definitely techniques used to show emotion from behind a mask like other characters. However, this one shows a lot more through their physicality and body language instead. While we've seen a few different iterations of Spider-Man over the years, his return into the MCU with Tom Holland allowed a different approach to be taken. They wanted to show the character as an inexperienced teenager, so they really leaned into the physical movement and body language to show his youthful expressions. Tom shared more about the secret of this on an episode of Hot Ones because he really wanted to bring an extra layer of physical emotion to the character. We'll get to that in a moment, but first, let's talk about the emotion from behind the mask. With Spider-Man's reintroduction into the MCU, there were two key changes implemented to show expression. First, rather than the eyes just being stitched into the mask, they used VFX to create an iris system around the white of the eye that could slide over it like a camera aperture. While there was a clear story reason for this change, it helped add subtle emotions and insight in the times that it was used. Secondly, instead of animating the mask from the outside, they animated Tom's face as if it were under the mask. This gave an effect that let the cloth of the suit react and stretch naturally, which gave another layer of depth to the character. To continue with the natural feel, they put a heavy emphasis on how Spider-Man moved in a way that showed dedication, but also a level of immaturity in his movement. But of course, they didn't cut any corners on figuring out how to do this. With motion capture, there is usually a good amount of cleanup to make things look polished. When they would make the CG version from Tom's motion capture, they looked to keep as many human flaws as they possibly could. This strategy allowed them to include moments where he looked off balance or uneasy in his decisions to show that immaturity. They even went as far as taking the data from failed stunts and moments where Tom was idle off camera to give the artist more to work with. This was actually so effective that Tom fully believed the first full CGI versions of Spider-Man were actually him. So what was Tom's influence on this? In an episode of Hot Ones, he talked about when you have the ability to show expression with your face taken away, you have to pivot to your physicality. In Tom's mind, his idea was for his arms to be dead weight. This would make it so when he would move his arms, that they would sway with uncertainty and bring a sense of youth to his movement and moments of peril. Finally, they had a great quote from Tom in that episode that wraps everything up very nicely. Playing a superhero takes away your biggest superpower as an actor, since you're always covering your face. In all of my videos, I talk a lot about the importance of an emotional connection with the audience. When a movie gets that right, we truly feel it. However, when we have a key piece of getting that across blocked by a mask, everything else matters that much more. Whether the method is extremely simple or insanely complex, all of these techniques help the character make that bond with the audience in a way that feels most natural. There's a whole bunch more information we could have discussed in the video, but if you are interested in learning more about these techniques, the science behind them, and the extreme technical details, check out the description for a deeper look. Peace.